Hey, how you doing? Welcome to The Changemakers. My name's Dave Corlett. I'm the business director at the creative agency Shapeby. And this is our series that is all about creativity in B2B tech. Welcome to episode number 42 of The Changemakers, part one. Uh, we've actually split this episode out into three segments because we've got three wonderful guests for you, all talking about something that is super interesting at the moment, which is the role of brand and in particular design within that brand journey within fintech businesses. Now, there's quite a clear reason we wanted to talk about this at this point, because it's a super interesting time for fintech. I mean, if you cast your mind back even kind of three, four years ago, fintech was very much seen as a bit of an underdog, you know, a challenger to the big guns, the really established financial institutions and companies that have been around for a long, long time. Fast forward to now, and it's a very different picture. Um, a lot of fintech companies, um, Monzo, Revolut, Stripe, um, who we've got Michael Jeter from Stripe talking to today, um, you know, they're very much mainstream. Uh, and so we really wanted to take a look at the role that brand has played within that journey from underdog challenger to much more mainstream. Um, first off, I've got a really great guest for you. Aaron Robbs is the creative director at Ramp. Ramp is a corporate spend management company that have been making absolute waves over the last few years. Really, really phenomenal stuff. We actually had their VP of marketing, Ashley Stepien, as one of our first guests on the podcast uh, a couple of years ago. Um, time flies. We get to today and Ramp are absolutely killing it. And brand design has played a crucial part in that. So I really wanted to get Aaron's take on that journey, um, his role in driving forward um, that visual element of their brand and everything else in between messaging, all of that. Um, and, you know, it didn't disappoint. So here is what Aaron had to say. Hey, Aaron, thanks so much for joining me on the Changemakers podcast. How are you doing today? I'm well. Thank you so much for having me. I'm uh, excited to be here. Yeah, good, good. Listen, um, I, I just mentioned to you before that I've admit, been such a big admirer of the Ramp Visual Identity. One of our first guests on the podcast going back two years ago now was Ashley Stepien, your VP of Marketing at the time. And one of the big reasons I wanted to talk to her was because I was just so in love with that Ramp brand. So I'm so excited to have a, a chat with you today. And I guess let's just dive into it. So, um, you know, as I said, I, I feel like, and, and my team, completely agrees with me on this, by the way, we had this conversation in the studio just now, that the ramp visual identity is just so well considered. Um, and I'd really love to get an insight into, you know, the design principles of the brand and how they guide you and your team uh, on a day-to-day -day basis. Yeah, definitely happy to talk a bit about that. Um, you know, if, if, if I can kind of zoom out quickly and sort of think about like past teams I've been a part of, you know, I, I, uh, I think about design principles uh, for those, some of those teams like uh, aim higher or sweat the detail. Some of these that, you know, in, in my mind always sort of kind of read to me as being a little empty or sort of vapid in, in some ways, just like something that, you know, the, the team leader had to do. So I, I, I think in some ways I don't have principles sort of codified uh, in, in that way, but I, I do have some, you know, uh, things that sort of guide guide me in the way I, I sort of think about how, how I lead the team. I would say first off is, is just really thinking about like uh, hiring great people, um, you know, with a low ego, people that are kind, people that are also really ambitious and competitive and, and want to do their best work. I sort of find that 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 type of person sort of brings along a lot of those things that, you know, would be table stakes for me, you know, sweating the details, sort of like focus on craft to sort of uh, trying to challenge the status quo and, and, and sort of do something really different. So for me, it all starts with, uh, you know, hiring a really amazing team and sort of giving them autonomy to, to kind of push things forward. I would say for me personally, I just sort of, because Ramp is uh, almost a different company every six months in some ways, we're just moving so fast and we're growing so quickly. When I joined in 2021, we were right at 100 people. <clears throat> now I think we're close to 600. So you can imagine like our product suite is, is sort of growing, expanding. We're, we're getting sharper on kind of where it is and what we want to uh, specifically focus on. So that sort of requires the brand to be pretty flexible. So. I try to just sort of zoom out to just first principles um, and, you know, 
probably for 10 years or so, 12 years when I, I first read the uh, Vignelli canon, I, I was struck by sort of like how simple his sort of like guiding uh, tenets were for him. And it was just uh, just three three words, like semantics, syntactics, and pragmatics. And semantics is really just searching for the meaning in whatever project we're working on. So for me, it's just like keeping your audience in mind, really understanding the category, understanding what you're working towards, what you're trying to solve, and doing a lot of that research in the beginning, uh, syntactics, creating an order around that meeting. Uh, so these uh, systems you create, the libraries of images you make, uh, uh, all these things, you know, sort of ladder up into, into that meaning. So uh, I think within that, you know, I've got stand, pretty standard sort of uh, things I'm looking for. You know, is this visually appealing? Is there a clear visual hierarchy? Is the type skill great? Uh, is this as simple as we can make it? Is it clear, for example? Uh, and then lastly, just pragmatics. Does the output make sense? Is this understood uh, by the people that are looking at it? So, you know, I, I really try to ensure that, you know, we're not navel gazy. We're not <clears throat> designers designing for designers that, you know, we're, we're always sort of uh, putting our, our audience in mind. Um, kind of moving on. Um, I, I, sorry, yeah, yeah. I was just going to say. Sorry, I was just going to say, um, how, how big is your team there? You mentioned about hiring people, hiring the right people, but how big is your team there? Totally, totally. I think there are nine people on sort of the core brand uh, design team, and then our, our sister teams like uh, brand and design ops. That's a, a team of five producers. So I've, I've kind of divided that the team up into a couple of segments. One is the sys design systems team, and they really focus on everything I would uh, classify as like graphic design, those type systems, the uh, uh, system that informs our, our website, uh, I think through motion guidelines, uh, uh, so on and so forth, events, spatial design, that type of thing. That team uh, focused on art and image, so photography, uh, a lot of animation happens on that team, illustration, uh, video work for customer stories, anything that would sort of, I think, complement this sort of more rigid uh, systems-based work. This is more like the expressive sort of uh, side of, of what we're doing. So, uh, and then also writing and uh, until recently strategy was report brand strategy was reporting into my org. Uh, the design um, ops team is uh, just our incredible and kind of closest partners in the company. They're responsible for process, you know, how work gets done. Uh, there's sort of an inter interface between our team and sort of the rest of the company. So helping us prioritize against, uh, you know, company priority, priorities and making sure that we're like, you know, focusing on the, on the right work to be done. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. I think you were going to make another point about the kind of principal side of things as well. Sorry, I interrupted you. <laughs> no, no, that's, that's quite all right. Um, I, you know, I think one thing I think a lot about is just sort of, you know, every company is different. So every brand team, you know, needs to adapt and sort of be different for the company that are in. Uh, you know, and I think often we talk about uh, brands or brand teams in the context of, of a rebrand. That's usually when when uh, a lot of these this this topic comes up. Um, and this is a moment in time where a company's sort of like done the most drastic thing they could do, which is a complete visual, strategic, verbal overhaul of their company. That's pretty drastic, I, I think. And, um, you know, most companies only need to do this when something when, when the brand team has really fallen behind or uh, it doesn't really match the promise of the product or it's just, you know, they're about to IPO or something. Uh, but I, I think this is really like, you know, unnecessary if, if the brand team is really in lockstep with the company. So if I'm thinking about ramp and what's important at ramp, it's it's velocity over everything. Uh, that, I think that's the key to uh, us growing as quickly as we have, uh, have sort of uh, finding product market fit as quickly as we have is just sort of like this deep seated sort of uh, aspect to the to the company. So, you know, we try to not spend much time planning. We, we try to be doing more than we're planning. It's low process, high output. Um, and if I think about it that way, you know, like uh, I would be really cautious for a young company that's still like, growing so quickly to try to like implement uh, a brand that's super rigid, full of rules uh, and, and just like fully, uh, fully formed, you know, so we try to keep it really flexible. Uh, just so it's open to evolution so we can sort of like work at the same pace as like the product teams where they're evolving quickly. I think we want to evolve quickly as well. Um, so I think a lot of what I focused on in the beginning is, a, is, is really trying to create these design systems that uh, can support that speed, whether it's for growth teams to do a lot of experimentation and, and ensure that works consistent with a lot of like the core marketing and uh, product pages to create like image libraries that uh, uh, feel bespoke, but they can help teams like the sales team 
do their work more consistently with what we're doing much more quickly. And then just generally trusting our team and, you know, uh, we hire a great talent. Uh, and I think we all have a pretty good understanding of, you know, the brand at this point. So if you know enough to go, just go, go for it. You know, we're not trying to like uh, slow the process down too much. So it, it's a little like ambiguous and kind of uh, hard to pin down, but, you know, I think it requires us to be really like tightly aligned and, uh, you know, specifically aligned with the pace of the company. Yeah, absolutely. And I think, you know, from the outside looking in, you can see that kind of flexibility in things like your, your the brand campaign that you launched fairly recently. You know, you can really see that simplicity and that flexibility kind of play out in the real world over there. So um, hats off to you for that. I just want to kind of come back to you on something that you said a little bit earlier about, you know, the kind of the, the, the types of people that you hire, people who kind of maybe have that world view of looking to do things a little bit differently. Um, you know, I think, uh, it's interesting with companies like Ramp because you know you you, you are kind of coming up as a tradition like a, ch a challenge of to kind of more traditional finance companies. Um, I just wondered from a from a brand point of view, where are the kind of opportunities to be kind of different and disruptive as a brand within a space like yours? And obviously, and, and, and on the flip side of that, are there kind of certain areas, touch points, channels where you maybe have to maybe just toe the line a little bit more um, and rein it in a, t a touch? Yeah, totally. You know, one thing we talk a lot about is, you know, how our brand or brand voice should exist along like a really wide spectrum. And we should think about, you know, how and where we sort of express along that spectrum. I think on one on one far end, you would have something like an uh, advertising campaign or an out of home campaign, like you just mentioned. I think that's that's a place where we want to be the most expressive, the most sort of like provocative or, or the most clear. I think there are a lot of different ways or uh, you might want to express in, in those areas. But I would say that like on that far end is, is where we're probably going to be the take the most risks or sort of try to stand out the most all the way, I think, to like the writing within the product, which, you know, we, we touch a, a little bit, not not too much. But I think in that place, you know, you're really trying to help the customer uh, along their journey to get out of the way to be clear and understanding. So there, I, you know, I think like in between, there's a lot of places where you need to have a point of view or the way you want to show up. So um, that's, that's kind of how I think about it. Uh, a little bit, um, but but really for me, you know, there's this sort of tension or sort of challenge to balance uh, being surprising or sort of challenging the status quo uh, with, with building credibility in this space. Uh, you know, I think like startups and the finance space are up against, you know, companies like Amex uh, or, uh, you know, a lot of well-established companies like Bill.com or Concur, for example. Um, you know, I think we have the opportunity to kind of come in and combine some of those things and, and, and do it in a way that is, is unexpected, but also like familiar. Um, maybe if like, I really love this idea of like, where do you toe the line? Uh, where do you uh, sort of, um, you know, become a challenger? And I, I think it's, as I was thinking about this question just now, just uh, the idea of um, style versus personality kind of came to mind. And, and this idea of Towing the line, like, you know, where do we follow rules? Where do we sort of feel familiar or where, where are we playing it safe? And I sort of think about that as, as sort of style decisions in some way. So, you know, what are the, what are the decisions we're making that are kind of timeless that are going to uh, resonate with our audience, but also hopefully resonate with them as being aspirational. So these are thing these are decisions. I think there are millions of them, but uh, that kind of add up to um, being great. And they're usually like invisible to the, to the customer as, as well. So talking about a great type scale or, or the way things move when they animate or just having like unexpectedly great photography for a FinTech company. I, I think that those are kind of areas where like, you know, these are like small decisions that just sort of add up to something bigger that is, is really about style. I almost think of about these like building a wardrobe or something, you know, like you don't want to have like, uh, a bunch of like pieces in your wardrobe that are like you know very different from each other because it's hard to mix and match. You want to like st stay to a closer color palette or sort of find timeless pieces that sort of will always sort of be in style. So it's, it's kind of how I think about like where do we um, where do we toe the line? It's like wh what decisions can we make that we know are going to be consistent and sort of hold things together versus um, you know being out in the world in these brand campaigns. I think those are those are areas where we want our personality to come through. So uh, you know thinking about like if you're at a party. Or something and you're talking to people it's you, you know you, you don't want to go in and show up and tell your life story or or just be like uh, incredibly long-winded you have to think about like how you're gonna show up and sort of say something interesting or sort of stand out or be memorable and i think these are places where you know we're thinking about our, our customer and uh sp specifically in the finance space you know i think there's a lot of uh you know 
feeling from teams of oh, oh, these are accountants or these are CFOs or controllers. They're, you know, very straightforward. They're this way. But, you know, I think at the end of the day, they're, they're uh, people who laugh and watch comedy. They, they go out to eat with their friends and have great conversations. They read books, they watch movies. It's, so it's, it's that those are areas where I think like we really want to pull from culture and tap into culture and, and sort of uh, reflect it back in a surprising and interesting way. Um, but I think we don't want to do that at every step along the journey. It's, it's being really strategic and how and where we show up and, and uh, how we present. Yeah, no, absolutely. And I think that it's just, it's really interesting because I think, you know, there's this tendency within kind of financial services and, 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 you know, finance in general to look at, you know, to think of it as kind of, you know, the, the staid old traditional finance companies versus uh, what you might call a new breed of kind of fintech firms. But obviously, as we know, it's a lot more nuanced than that. Um, you know, I think it's still, and, and actually, you know, you can look at it as broadly as it's just classic kind of, you know, marketing and branding, really. Ultimately, you know, you have to appeal to people, you have to appeal to their emotions. That's not going to change whether, you know, the kind of the heritage of the business necessarily or the, um, I suppose, you know, it, it, what's, what it's really down to, as you say, it's the personality of the brand and how that's expressed through design, through messaging, through everything that you do. And really, you know, if you can kind of look at that holistically um, and, 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 you know, and, and build a brand like yours, which, which naturally appeals, but has that flexibility to keep adapting, then, um, as I said, I think it's a lot more nuanced than looking at it as kind of, which we tend to do sometimes as, you know, challenger versus established. Um, so, yeah, I, I, and, and again, it comes across. I think I, I do, you know, I've touched on your brand campaign already um, as a great example of that, just because kind of it really sticks in the mind. We published our last, uh, our most recent newsletter, agency newsletter, um, all about brand campaigns. And yours was an example that we held up the one that we really, really admired um, for its power and Thank its simplicity. You. And actually, I just wanted to dive into that um, that brand campaign because, um, you know, especially at the moment, but certainly kind of over the last 12 months or so, it's been quite tricky as far as I understand it for, for lots of kind of brand marketers and brand leaders, um, you know, whether they're at startups or more established businesses to, to get kind of sign off for, for, for brand campaigns because, you know, obviously, you know, when times are tough, you look towards more kind of, short-term tactics like performance marketing um, to drive results. Mm -hmm. um, you obviously, you know, you launched this, this brand campaign, you got it signed off. Um, to what extent was it challenging to, to build the business case for that campaign um, internally, you guys? Yeah, sure. Um, happy to talk about that. I, you know, I think it wasn't hard uh, because uh, our CEO and our strategic finance team, finance teams really see, you know, the value in, in doing that type of work, building brand awareness and, you know, your marked budget to kind of allocate towards doing that. Um, uh, you know, I, I report to the CEO, uh, he oversees all of marketing and, you know, he's, he's really, uh, a great collaborator and, and super interested in this work. So that, that makes it easier. Like we don't really have to pitch to him ideas as much as we do just collaborate with him on and how do we go out and express this so so you know for me i think like um performance versus brand marketing it shouldn't be an either or thing at some point it, you know when you reach a certain point of scale it needs to be both you know i think it's like a strategic choice on, on when that <clears throat> when that happens and when it's right for your company but uh for us this is this is the right time to kind of invest in it so i think about like performance marketing um you know, I think companies that are like early on and they're trying to find product market fit, uh, you know, it's, it's much more economical than doing like, you know, broader brand awareness, which is notoriously hard to measure. It's uh, there's a long tail there. It takes a long time to sort of see those results. But, um, you know, I, I think there are advantages to, to doing that early, it's, you know, where you can reach customers quickly uh, because it's so hyper targeted. You can have a high degree of certainty that, you know, your message is getting through. You can track the effectiveness of the work. You can experiment get feedback and optimize quickly. I think those are all like amazing things when you're trying to show uh, ROI on, 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 you know, the money you're spending. Um, but I think, you know, once you kind of get known and, and uh, you need to go out and, and grow, you know, I think that's when you kind of run to, you know, uh, where you have to kind of think about this work as sort of an art and a science. Uh, and, you know, when you're developing a brand, uh, it's, you know, I always think back to Marty Neumeyer and the, and the brand gap, you know, brand isn't what you say it is. It's, it's what they say it is. You know, you can really like shape perception and sort of like influence how people think about your company. Um, 
but but at the end of the day, you don't have total control over over that narrative. So you have to kind of build that uh, relationship and that sort of um, personality over over time. So, you know, for me, that's you know, in everything we do and every decision we make, we're we're really trying to differentiate uh, within our category to surprise customers, whether that's from you know product perspective and uh, you know the way that we're you know eliminating receipts basically from expense reporting you know like there are so many things that are like radically different about what we're doing as a company and you know my end goal is to make sure that like the brand work is really reflecting that uh, high caliber of, of the product work and, and always keep in the um, you know end customer in mind at the end of the day you know um, so you know like I mentioned earlier you know where can we find opportunities to inject a sense of humor or be kind of aspirational through like design decisions or, you know, um, you know, just being incredibly concise if we're just trying to sort of uh, land a, a specific idea. Uh, I think it's, it's really fun. It's a, it's a place where, you know, I think that's, that's where the, the team you hire and, and their sense of humor or sort of sensibilities really like come, come into play big time, you know? Yeah, absolutely. And I think that's a great place to end. I think, you know, um, again, I've said it before and I'll say it again, it comes through from the outside looking in, you know, certainly from 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 what I've seen from the Ramp brand, you know, and, and I think that's an incredible testament to you and your team. Um, and your long way continue. Um, but I just wanted to say thank you so much for, for taking the time to be on the Changemakers today. Really, really do appreciate it. And thank you for giving us the inside story into the Ramp brand. Yeah, I appreciate it, Dave. It was awesome to be here. Thank you so much.